So next we're going to look at what we can say using parametric calculus about the unit circle. And you might feel like you already know everything there is to know about the unit circle, right? It shows up all over the place. It's so common. You've been working with trig since high school, right? Do you feel like what, what more could we possibly learn? Well, maybe not much more. Maybe we're just going to be repeating things that you can already deduce just by looking at the circle. But it does at least kind of confirm that a lot of what we're doing is correct and um, maybe does give some verification for things that you might have observed about the unit circle without ever actually knowing how to formally confirm them, right? So first of all, if we're looking for horizontal or vertical tangent lines, right? Well, we know that uh, for, for horizontal, we want y prime of t to be equal to 0. Um, but y prime of t is just cosine of t. And between 0 and 2 pi, there are precisely two places where cosine of t is equal to 0, at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2, right? For vertical tangents, well, we expect x prime to be equal to 0. Um, x prime is minus sine t, so we need sine t to be equal to 0, and that suggests that t should be 0 or pi, or I suppose 2 pi. Although 0 and 2 pi, they sort of correspond to the same point on the, on the circle, right? Um, so some people, when they, when they define the unit circle, they might take a half open interval here since 0 and 2 pi, they really give you the same point, so you maybe don't need to have it twice. Doesn't really matter um, for most of what we do. Okay, and of course this, this makes sense if you draw the circle, right? Unit circle, we know what it looks like, but here it is anyway. Right, there's our circle. Um, so pi over 2 is here, 3 pi over 2 at the bottom, and yes, those are exactly where the horizontal tangents happen, right? Sort of the maximum vertical extent, right? Maximum y value, minimum y value, and notice where the vertical tangents are, maximum x value, minimum x value, right? So we get that. Um, now, what about the second part? This is part one. Part two. Let's compute the normal line, okay? So the normal line has, you know, so the tangent line has slope y prime over x prime. Negative reciprocal, normal line should be minus x prime over y prime, okay? Which is minus minus sine, so sine t over y prime, which is cos t. So we get tan. We get tan t. Um, so the equation of the line is going to be y is equal to y at t naught. So sine of t naught, right? Plus the slope, tan of t naught times x minus x naught, which is cos t naught. Um, but notice that this actually simplifies because if we multiply tan through the brackets, we get x times tan t naught. Um, tan t naught times cos t naught gives me sine. So this is negative sine, cancels with that one. So we actually just get tan t naught times x, okay? So that actually gives us a couple of things. Okay, let's mark some points. So t naught is some angle, right? And the normal line through the point, right? So here's the corresponding point, right? The normal line passes through that point perpendicular to the circle, and notice that the normal line is just it, well, it passes through the origin, right? It goes through those two points. So that's our normal line, right? And, and actually, we kind of 
there's two things that this confirms for us that we've probably noticed and understood about circles, but maybe we didn't have a solid method for showing it. One being that if the slope of any ray coming out from the origin corresponding to an angle of t naught, that the slope of that line is given by the tangent function, right? Tangent gives us slope. The other thing being that any radian on a circle always intersects the circle uh, perpendicularly, right? So we can see that here as well, right? That perpendicular intersection because we do indeed have the normal line. 